On this video, I'd like to talk about first, yung earned value. Yung earned value is basically a measure ng actual work na natapos at a given point in time. Yung earned value analysis naman is a technique we use to compare yung actual work versus kung ano yung plan to be completed at a given point in time. So, para makapag-perform ng earned value analysis, we have here the plan schedule. Meron ako ditong limang activities with corresponding duration and budgeted costs. Meron din ako ditong field report at the end of day 7. So sa report na ito, makikita natin yung mga activities na completed, ongoing, and yung incurred cost ng each activity. Para ma-visualize natin na maigi, plot natin yung schedule into a Gantt chart. So for activity A, wala siyang predecessor. So ang gagawin natin is... Uh, siya yung first activity natin. So, we draw the bar chart of activity A. So, that's 3 days duration. Yung next natin is yung activity B. Si activity B is dependent sa A. So, iduduktong natin yung activity B sa A. So, that's 3 duration. So, I'll uh, insert the bar chart here. Now, for activity C, dependent din siya sa activity A. So, meron naman siyang 4 uh, four days duration. So, lagay lang natin yung 4 days duration dito. Okay. Now, for activity D, meron uh, tong 5 days duration and dependent siya sa activity B. So, uh, idudutong natin sa activity B and then we have 5 days duration. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, for activity A, dependent naman siya kay activity D and it has a 3 days duration. So, lagay natin siya rito. Okay. So, ito na yung ating bar chart schedule. After natin i-plot, highlight lang natin yung end ng day 7. So, maglalagay ako ng line at the end of uh, day 7. Medyo kapalan natin para mas kita natin yung line. So, I'll color it with red. So, ito yung ating report at the end of day 7. Now, check natin yung field report na na-receive natin. Based sa report, activity A is completed na. So, that's expected since based on the plan schedule, dapat complete din ito, day 3 pa lang. Although there's no information kung kailan natapos yung activity, at least we know that this was completed and that's good and nag-incur lang ito ng uh, 900, which is also within our budget. So, yun yung budgeted cost natin for activity A. Yung activity B naman has the same scenario. We also have no information if kailan to natapos. So, what we know is it's done. But the problem is nag incurred to ng higher cost than our budgeted cost. So, this is uh, 2,200 versus yung budgeted cost natin na 2,100. Now, on activity C, it is already at 50% completion. But if it's check natin yung plan schedule, dapat completed na ito at the end of day 7. So, it means that delay yung activity C natin. So, if I put a line here, so, uh, relagay tayo ng line. Let's copy this line. And I put a line here. We can clearly see na at the end of day 7, ito pa lang uh, yung completed niya. So, this region. So, this region, I'll select other colors for that. So, parang ito pa lang yung completed. That's like a 2 days worth of accomplishment. And if we also check the incurred cost, so, ito yung incurred cost natin for activity C. Medyo mataas yung uh, 1,000. Because we know that the 50% is equivalent to a 2 days of work in our plan. So, if we multiply itong 2 days by the cost per day ng activity C, ang lalabas dyan is 800. So, dapat 800 pa lang yung ini-expect natin cost. And yet, nakapag-incur na to na 1,000. Let's take a look at activity D. Based on plan schedule, meron itong uh, 5 days duration. 
and we're expecting na completed na yung day 1 activity D at the end of day 7 ng ating project. So, that's 20% of the total duration because uh, meron tayong 5 duration. So, out of 5 duration, completed na yung day 1. So, that's 20% and lumalabas na on track tayo for activity D because yun din yung nakalagay sa ating field report. In terms of incurred cost naman, since 20% uh, is equivalent to one day of work, in-expect natin na mag-incur lang to ng 400 in day 1 because meron tong cost per day na 400. So, based sa field report natin, 400 lang din yung na-incur na cost. Which is, ibig sabihin, within budget yung activity din natin so far. For the last activity, hindi pa nag -umpisa. So, that's expected kasi based on our plan schedule, sa day 12 pa siya mag -umpisa. Now, what we can do next is to fill out all of the information in this table. We have here the EVA metrics and yung una natin nga alamin is yung actual cost or the actual cost of work performed. Literally, ito yung amount kung magkano na yung nababayaran natin para sa work na completed na so far. Activity A incurred 900. So, yung actual cost of work performed for activity A is equivalent to 900. For activity B, yung incurred cost is 2,200. So, yung actual cost of work performed nito is, of course, 2,200. Pansin ninyo na hindi natin ginamit yung 2,100 because this is a budgeted cost. Now, activity C incurred 1,000 uh, so far. So, that's our actual cost of work performed. Activity D, yung nagasto so far is 400. So, we use that amount for actual cost of work performed. Yung activity A, since hindi pa tayo nag-uumpisa, wala pa tayong ginagastos for this project. So, zero lang siya. So, yung total to date, if we add these numbers, so makukuha natin is 4,500. The next metric is the earned value or yung budgeted cost of work performed. Ito yung amount na in-expect nating bayaran for the amount of work na nakompleto na in actual. So that means for activity A, since completed na to, we are expecting to pay 900 because that's what we budgeted for that activity. So we put here 900. Same goes for activity B. Since completed na din to, we're expecting to pay the budgeted amount, the full budgeted amount of 2,100. So we put here 2,100. For activity C, since 50% pa lang to, Ang in-expect nating bayaran is yung kalahati lang ng budgeted cost which is yung six, uh, 1,600. So yung kalahati ng budgeted cost is 800. So 800 yung ilalagay natin earned value. Now for activity D, since meron itong 5 days duration, yung 20% is equivalent to a 1 day of work. If we're expecting to pay 400 a day for activity D, ibig sabihin sa day 1, we're expecting to pay 400. So, lalagyan natin dito is 400. Lastly, for activity A, since hindi pa tayo nag-uumpisa, we're not expecting to pay any amount of money. So, this is zero. So, if ito total natin to, 4,200, yung total budgeted cost of work performed natin. Now, for the plan value or budgeted cost of work schedule, Ito yung amount na in-expect nating bayaran based sa expected accomplishment ng project. So, for activity A, since we're expecting na completed na to by the end of day 7, in-expect na din nating bayaran yung full amount nito na 900. So, that's our budgeted cost of work schedule. Parehas din ang scenario yung activity B. We're expecting that this will be completed before uh, day 7. So, we're expecting to pay the full amount of 2,100. Again, that's our budgeted cost of work schedule. Sa activity C, based again on our plan schedule, we're expecting na completed na siya at the end of day 7. So, we're expecting to pay the budgeted amount of activity C, which is 1,600. 
Now, for activity D, if we look at our Gantt chart, 1 out of 5 duration is dapat completed na. So, that translate to 20% complete. So, in-expect natin na magbabayad na tayo ng 20% ng budgeted cost ng activity D. So, 20% of 2,000 is 400. So, we put here 400 as the budgeted cost of work schedule for activity D. Now, for activity E, hindi pa natin in-expect mag ito. So, zero pa to. So, let's get the total amount. So, that's 5,000. Now, dito na tayo sa CPI or yung tinatawag natin cost performance index. For the CPI, we get the ratio of the earned value and the actual cost. Pwede natin kunin yung CPI ng kada activity but it will not provide us that much value. What we're more concerned about is the CPI of the whole project. So, now, if CPI is less than 1, it means na over budget yung ating project. If greater than 1, our project is performing well in terms of cost. So, let's determine the CPI. So, let's divide the earned value of 4,200 by the actual cost of 4,500. That's going to give us 0 0.933. So, we can also calculate the cost variance. That's 4,200 minus 4,500. That will give us a negative 300 cost variance. So, yung negative tells us na over budget yung ating project. It means that mas malaki yung ginagastos natin compared sa expected cost ng project. But notice that uh, CPI and cost variance doesn't tell us if the project is ahead or behind the schedule. So that's what the SPI and the schedule variance is for. So your SPI or schedule performance index is a ratio of earned value and the plan value. So if we divide the 4,200 by 5,000, that's going to give us 0 0.84 uh, SPI. A value of less than 1 means that the project is behind schedule. We can also take the schedule variance by subtracting 4,200 by 5,000. So that will result to a negative 800. So the amount doesn't give that much value. So ang importante lang malaman is if negative ang schedule variance, in this case it is, and that means the project is behind schedule. So now, by performing the earn value analysis, nalaman natin na yung project na to is over budget and at the same time behind the schedule. Now, there's a better way to determine if the project is really uh, behind the schedule and that's by performing the critical path method. So, but mas maganda yung critical path method? Because critical path method is logic driven and it provides the most accurate readings whether the project is ahead or behind the schedule. Now, if you want to learn more about the basics of critical path method, you can watch this video here.